All right, I want to do a video on fixing a Subaru problem that you may encounter. And that is when your dashboard lights up like a Christmas tree and you get a, a automatic transmission over temp. A bunch of lights come on. Uh, I'll give you an example of what mine looked like after this. Normally this would throw some codes, P0700, P2764, P2763. Now there's a couple of troubleshooting steps that you can do uh, to isolate that. Um, I'll, do, I'll show that in the video. I'm also going to give links to other videos, other YouTube videos um, and products uh, as I go along in this. This video is not necessarily a how-to. It's more of a, I can prove to you that you can save a thousand bucks because when you get that solenoid problem, um, basically Super will only sell you the entire valve body. They won't sell you the individual solenoid. Uh, however, Dorman has solenoids. There's a bunch of them that are available. I use Dorman because I've used their products before and I actually have some faith and confidence in them. So I have links to all of this in the description. And let me go ahead and get started. Here's what it looked like when we discovered we had a problem. So here's the Christmas tree effect. Everything's lit up. Well, not everything. Check engine light, AT oil temp, ABS, um, traction control. It's just a fine little mess. When you get that and the code, then you know that it's possible that this solenoid is bad. I'll go into some detail on how to check that in a minute. So I've hooked up this uh, scan tool. And if you've got the P2764, that's yet another indicator that the uh, lock up duty solenoid circuit is low, meaning that that solenoid is probably defective. I'm going to show you one more way to check uh, before you commit to tearing things apart and replacing the solenoid. All right, so we're looking at the top of the CVT, and this is the valve body. This is the connector coming in. There's a red and white wire on the bottom of it. You can actually check this resistance to ground from um, under the dashboard, but that connects to, let's see if we can get a close up of this. That connects to the pin, bottom pin, three from the left. And you want to measure resistance from that to ground. It should be between 10 and 13 ohms. If it's not, then that solenoid is defective. All right, so I've got an ohmmeter on that pin. We've got it against ground. And what we've got is 2.5 ohms. So that's nowhere near the 10 to 13 ohms. That would indicate that that uh, solenoid is defective. So what we're going to do um, is disassemble this top end. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. There's actually a really good video on Amazon from Dorman and I'm using their parts. Um, that goes through the whole process pretty good but I am going to show you uh, how we get to the solenoid and replace it and how to do any further tests if necessary. Alright so here's the valve body as it came out and I actually found these on YouTube diagrams show you which is which. Um, one of the things I did was double check. I followed out the uh, wiring diagram and the green wire is the suspect one, which is pin second one bottom from the left. And if we go against ground, you'll see that one is two ohms. And it should be 15 ohms. Now I checked one of the other, I actually checked all the solenoids as long as we got this out. And you can see the difference is 13 ohms on a good one, 12.9. This guy's great, man. He tells you what codes are generated for each of the solenoids. And, um, you know, there's that 2674. And then um, he also tells you where they appear in the pin. And it's actually really handy to have this so you know where, where it's at. All right, so we're going to take the retaining clip out. We're going to start with the furthest one. This is the solenoid. That's the lockup solenoid. But uh, these are all held in with these massively long bolts. And in case you're wondering, that's the uh, temperature thermometer, if you will, the temperature sensor for the AT. All right, now, let's get this. We're going to have to take this whole thing apart to get to that solenoid.
here is the replacement doorman. And of course I didn't cut it out, but I'm going to put it on in the same order they came off. Came with a cover. Not a lot of room to work with. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit of uh, transmission fluid on these O-rings. And we're going to slide it back in there. Now i got to remember which one was the short one. I believe it was the ground, or for the temperature sensor. I believe, I think that was the short yeah, one. Yeah, it is. So let's get everything. Actually, this, this phone takes pretty good video. Lined up. Oh, the, that's why. Ah, pay attention. There's one that's longer than the others because... Let's get everything lined up. This one has a ground wire. So I'm just putting this all back together. Um, one quick note. This bolt and this bolt are the two longer ones. These two. And um, there's a nut on the other side. So you might want to take that into account. This one here is the shorter one. This one here is a shorter one. I'm ass that's assuming you have the same transmission valve body. Um, I'm doing these. I, I couldn't find a torque spec on these, but I'm doing these to 60 inch pounds. Double check. And a short one. All right. Everybody's working. Take all these wires down out of the way. Now we're going to reassemble the whole thing. Basically put this back in here. The, um, the black bolts and the two silver ones. Uh, those torque to 6.5 foot pounds or 80 inch pounds, and then the cover is going to be six foot pounds or 72 inch pounds, basically the same thing. So let's get this back together. All right, so we just took it for a test drive about eh, maybe seven or eight minutes, and this is what we got. So we don't have the Christmas tree anymore. Apparently that one solenoid was causing all that problem. Getting it changed, that solved the problem so honestly it cost me less than a hundred bucks for the solenoid um, that's a dormant solenoid plus the parts from Subaru I'll put links to everything in the description um, Subaru won't sell you the solenoid they'll sell you the whole valve body and that thing runs about a thousand bucks so that's an easy way to save uh, 900 bucks if you're uh, inclined to do it yourself anyway I hope this video has been helpful to you if it has hit share and like and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching